and welcome to another edition of Resources for Life TV at resourcesforlife.com. My name is Greg Johnson and today's Earth Day, so it's appropriate that we're taking a look at environmentally friendly housing and construction. I'm here with Don Otto of DPO Construction and Marty White, who is the designer of the home that we're in. You're about to see a home tour and almost a workshop of the sorts with people asking some questions about the construction of the home, what makes it unique. So uh, Don, it's great to be here. And why don't you maybe just give a brief introduction to what we're about to see on the video and the home. Okay. All right. This, uh, this home is uh, one that celebrates Earth Day by being energy efficient and by saving uh, quite a bit of uh, pollution that would ordinarily go, go out into the air. A uh, home that I built similar to this uh, keeps 36,000 pounds of carbon dioxide out of the air every year and it costs the owner only about $200 a year to heat. We're building the home with the idea that conserve as much as you can with uh, materials that make sense and make the most sense to do it. I'm using structural insulated panels uh, that are very fast to build with. They're wonderfully well insulating. They're very quiet, uh, make a very quiet home, a very strong home, and, and they cost about the same as stick building. We're complementing the building envelope with sprayed urethane foam, which seals the whole roof to the sidewalls. And um, then when we go to, the, to providing the fresh air, that's provided by an energy recovery ventilation system. It's about 80% efficient at recovering the heat that is escaping and maintains the interior humidity at the conditioned levels. Uh, to complete the whole package, we're using geothermal heating and cooling. And that's just about the nuts and bolts of it. And Marty, what were some of the challenges in designing this home? I know you need to meet the expectations of the person who is uh, eventually going to live here, and yet at the same time you want to keep costs down, you want to keep efficiency up. Um, were there some challenges? There were uh, quite a few challenges actually. Um, for one thing, you want to keep the footprint as small as possible because uh, when you're talking about square foot cost, 100 square feet, say as much as $200 a square foot, there's $20,000 you can save just by getting that footprint smaller. Yeah. And this particular site is a corner lot, a uh, curving uh, lot where you've got two front yards, and so we're really limited as to how far we can spread out on this lot. Yeah. Uh, that was one of the, the main challenges and I, I think it came out real well. It, uh, it still uh, has the character and uh, requirements of the owner and uh, lighting levels and things like that are have been considered and, and work real well so uh, we're, we're pretty happy with how it all turned out. That was one thing I was impressed with going through the home today on this tour. There's so much light in here you know and uh, the windows still some of the windows have some covering on them but um, that, that's really a great advantage because, of course, you want as much natural light as possible. It feels good and saves money. Uh, this is what will eventually be the kitchen, right? Um, right, and, and what will make a dramatic difference is when you get your light-colored sheetrock ceiling and your yeah. light-colored walls. Uh, that's going to diffuse and, and reflect a lot wow. more light uh, around the space. Right now, we've got kind of a dark backdrop, but you're going to see a dramatic difference once that takes place. Yeah, and we'll see that eventually in the future version of this video. Uh, the other thing I was impressed with was, you know, this is a kitchen and yet it has this open spacious feeling because you can see this line of sight, as Don was explaining, extends across the home. So whatever room you're in feels like a big room because it really is. As you take the function from while well, we're cooking to now we're eating, you're still in that big open space. So that's great. And then you share that light as well. It's not boxed into a little room. That light opens up into the rest of the house. So well, anyway, thank you for the tour today and for uh, the future tours as we see the home progressing. And I uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks a lot. Yeah. One of, the, one of the ways that we achieve a, a sense of really large openness is to put some interferences of, uh, of the visual sightline, but generally we try to get as long a diagonal a sightline as we can, because if you look at, if you can get a sightline straight across the room, that is as long as you can see in any one, in, uh, straight across the room, but if you can see diagonally, that's an even longer line, and, and that gives you
your eye the feeling that the eye gives you the feeling that it's a much bigger than that it is. So it's a technique that Sarah Susanto has written a lot of uh, not so great customers. She loves to say, get a long straight sideline and that'll and that'll help you get the feeling that the house has a really large space. So where I've been leaning right now is to look at a window in a technical way. You look at the insulation value of the window. And so you're trying to get a window that has the greatest view value or insulation value. But you're up in the, in the heating season. But in the cooling season, that same glass then could possibly overheat if you don't have the right shade. So what I'm looking for is a glass that has the lowest, lowest solar heating coefficient without blocking a lot of light. And in fact, these windows now, that just the, the new glazing that has come out, have a bunch of really wonderful features to them. They have all of the all of the reduced solar heat gain of a glass that's meant for the Phoenix climate. It lets in all of the light of a window that's meant for the Iowa climate, and that has one of the higher insulation values of this in the market for a simple double pane glass. There are multiple pane glass uh, windows, three, four panes, but those really start increasing in cost and weight, and so. So they have to have beefier cranking mechanisms, beefier hinges, increasing cost, and so the cost really escalates quickly when you get these super insulated windows. So these are really, really good. The other nice thing about these windows, the glazing that they have on them, it's a self doing glass. They put a titanium dioxide coating fused right into the glass itself that lets the water sheet straight off rather than form beads and spots on the window, as well as if the sunlight hits it, it catalyzes that same coat and catalyzes the grime on the windows and lets it sheet, lets it all the sheets right down. The, uh, the manufacturer advertises that it drains 99% spot for them. Kind of cool. And it doesn't cost any more for that feature. Okay, to complete the shell, the, the, the building envelope, uh, what I do, I like to spray urethane foam directly on the underside of the, wrap, of the roof deck. And what that does then is you'll notice that there are recessed ceiling lights, a lot of a lot of cam lights here. There's duct work up there. All of those, all of that duct work and the lights are potential holes through what would be a conventional envelope, a conventional building envelope. If we put the insulation directly on top of the, the joists up here, that would be your thermal plane. But in this case, I like to spray it directly on the underside of the roof deck. Yes, there's more surface area to cover, um, and yes, the insulation is more expensive, but it gives you so many more advantages than regular insulation does. Uh, let's, let's take you right to the heart of the uh, energy producing parts of the, of the house. This is our heat pump, and it's going to be taking the heat from the earth to heat the house, and it will be taking the heat from the house, putting it back into the earth to cool it. So it's kind of a nice back and forth system. Um, we, Gretchen, you had a, you I had a question. question. The two tanks. Yeah. Why on earth do we have two water yeah, tanks? Yeah, because one seems like it's close to 70 gallons, but yeah. this seems like enough right there. Right. The reason that we have two, this smaller one over here is actually serving as a storage tank. And it stores water from the heat pump, actually specifically from a device called a D superheater. Now the compressor, when it produces the heat to heat the house, that is that's the primary source of heat, but because it's a machine, it creates its own heat just by just by its, its own action. That's called superheat. In order to be able to make use of that heat, what this device, what the heat pump has, is a D superheater, which is a water-filled jacket that surrounds the, the compressor, takes that takes the water from, from the city supply warms it up and puts it into a storage tank. So then when the water goes into the main heating, water heater tank, then it'll already, already be preheated up to say maybe 100 degrees. Instead of coming in at 50 degrees or so from the ground, it'll already be coming in pre-warmed. So the main heater doesn't have to work as hard. This has been a production of resourcesforlife.com where you'll find resources for better living. Come visit us on the web. For more information about environmentally friendly construction, visit dpoconstruction.com.